back. Um, that, that was definitely a, an intermittent problem. Yeah, and I know what it is. Um, is it bad connector here or not? I did want to uh, let you guys know that I was going to complete the uh, the loop amplifier series by uh, developing a balanced type amplifier to hook up to the loop. Uh, that was promised, but I can say that the original amplifier, which is nothing but the 2N 5109 classic circuit, <laughs> works so well. Uh, this is just an exercise more than anything. Um, you don't really need that much gain out there at the loop antenna when the loop is this big. Now with a smaller loop you might need a little more extra gain, but for that gigantic loop I've got out in the woods uh, you don't need to have a lot of gain. You're basically functioning as an impedance converter. You're, you're converting the, the very low impedance of the loop uh, up to 50 ohms and then driving it down the cable. And that only takes a few dB to do that. So with this balance circuit, which is again adapted from something off the internet, um, it's a little more complicated transformer. 15 identical twisted turns on a core and then you just make a center tap and, uh, and hook it up. Uh, that transformer is doing all the work. It's converting the balanced common base amplifiers into single-ended. It's also doing double duty uh, by taking the uh, the power uh, that's on the coax and running it through that same coil into a regulator that, that powers it. So it's a combination transformer and bias T all in one. So it's a very simple circuit, very effective. You don't need a choke. You need this one transformer that does the whole thing. Uh, the amplifiers, um, I'm going to use 2N2222s. I'm going to bias them very heavily, around 15 milliamps at 8 volts. So they're going to be dissipating about 100 milliwatts each. Those guys are going to get a little bit warm out there, but you know what? I think they'll be happy at that, uh, at that level. And of course, up here in New England in the winter, uh, it'll help uh, warm up the box a little bit. <laughs> so I will attempt to bias them. These are just some fictitious numbers I have on there before I've actually built it to try to uh, get the thing uh, started. And uh, referring to my old book here, Design of Modern Transistor Circuits to get the biasing right. So these two will go right to the loop. Um, it's 100 ohms to ground right on the, uh, on the emitters for the inputs. This is a very low impedance input. These are, in, in effect, trans-impedance amplifiers. They're converting the low impedance up to the high impedance in the collector. And then we're going from uh, balanced push-pull to single-ended on the output. So there it is. That's what we're going to go for for the uh, final uh, loop amp with one transformer. Google search and see if anybody else has uh, described that at all. You might be the first and only one. Uh, but so... Uh, I'm not going to go through the uh, the same things I did in the first video, the drilling of, drilling of the box, the mounting of the Type F connectors, and uh, getting the circuit board cut down. Uh, you can review the first video on the uh, loop amplifier and get those details. We're going to go right into uh, building the amplifier on the board. Let's take a look at the schematic of the push-pull common base loop amp. We know that the loop has a low impedance. Last time we handled this with a step-up transformer going into a 50 ohm amplifier. Unfortunately, it took two transformers to build that circuit, but it worked very well. What if there were a way to terminate the loop with a low impedance and maintain balance and get some gain out of it too? This is where we're uh, gonna use the common base push-pull amplifier circuit. The common base connection is not often seen because most sources that we uh, work with are medium to high impedance, so we almost always use the common emitter amplifier. With the common base circuit, we basically bias the same way as the common emitter to class A, but we actually drive the emitter rather than the base. The common base amplifier was popular for RF amplifiers in the old days when transistors had very low FTs. 
it doesn't suffer from the Miller capacitance limiting effect and the upper 3 dB point is greatly extended. You don't see this circuit much used outside of RF applications very often, but actually it's a superior amplifier uh, for things like uh, moving coil and Electrap microphones. I use a common base amplifier on my Electra amplifier in my ham station. The input resistance of common base amplifier is governed by the thermal voltage of the transistor divided by the current through the emitter, which we say is approximately the collector current. We're introducing the idea of an artificial input resistance that has to do with uh, the thermal voltage of the transistor. And you're going to say, well, what is thermal voltage? Well, thermal voltage concept is uh, it's a formula that's wrapped around uh, Boltzmann's constant and the charge of an electron. Basically, it's KT over Q. Anyway, around the VT temperature, and the temperature we're talking about is room temperature, or 300 degrees Kelvin. That's where we and the amplifier is going to live. This thermal voltage of the transistor is 26 millivolts. So the input impedance is 26 millivolts divided by the amount of bias we put through the transistor. In this case, 26 millivolts divided by 15 milliamps equals 1.73 ohms. Those 100 ohm resistors, let's look at those. You were thinking maybe they define the input impedance of the common base amplifier. Well, that's not true. They don't do much of anything. Uh, we could have anything from a... Uh, 10 ohm resistor to a 500 ohm resistor at R1 and still the input impedance would be dominated uh, by the 26 millivolts divided by this 15 milli milliamps that we're biasing the transistor with. So if we if we do that math we find out that uh, tip to tip here with the loop we're less than 5 ohms impedance. So that's a lot better match than going into a common emitter amplifier that might have an input impedance of 100, 200, or 2,000 ohms. The approximation on the output impedance is fairly easy, too. All we're going to do is we're going to look at the voltage from emitter to collector, and we're going to divide the bias into it. So 7 volts divided by 15 milliamps gives us a, a, an impedance on each side of 466 ohms. 466 ohms. That doesn't sound very good. Um, that's going to be a horrible SWR. That's not close to 50 ohms. So we've got a big issue here. We've got to transform this down to the 50 or 75 ohms at the output. So uh, there's several ways we could accomplish that. We could make the bias really, really heavy and uh, the transistor would get really, really hot and probably burn up. That's one way. Uh, we could wind a fancy transformer. Uh, let's say we made a 9 to 1 transformer. We could transform the uh, high impedance of the collectors down to the 50 ohms with a, with a transformer. Or we could just swamp the primaries with a couple of resistors, which will artificially set the uh, the load impedance lower, and uh, you could end up with 50 ohms with using a 1 to 1 or a 2 to 1 transformer. I decided to keep it really simple and just use a pair of resistors on the collector. You'll see other circuits uh, using common base that do this as well. Now you're wasting power, there's no doubt about it. Um, you're not developing as much voltage swing. Remember, the, the gain of the common base amplifier is very simply uh, governed by the amount of current gain you get through the transistor that you're driving through a load resistor or a load impedance in this case. And we've just defined the impedance as being much lower by putting the, uh, the 180 resistors on the collector. Okay, here's the part that some of you may want to skip through, but uh, here's some frighteningly crude mathematics that describes where that magic 26 millivolts comes from that you see all over the place when you're talking about common base amplifiers. Basically we're trying to calculate the input and output impedances of the amplifier and the gain of the amplifier with this uh, little math section. And it's, it's uh, when, you, when you have 
figures like 26 millivolts that are constants, it usually tells you that you have some kind of constant involved and things you can measure easily, like Boltzmann's constant and temperature and the charge of an electron, things like that. And that's how we uh, derive these impedances. So using Ohm's law, we find out that we're simply dividing the output impedance that's developed by the input impedance that we've uh, developed. And uh, it's all about how much current we're putting through that output resistance that defines the swing on the output of the common base amplifier. Nine o'clock, nine o'clock, we've got to go and uh, go to Ocean State Job Okay, so I've done the uh, drilling and blasting on the box. I now have a little circuit card uh, cut out. I'm going to be using a Manhattan style construction with little pads glued on. Um, jacks are mounted. So it's starting point for the, uh, for the loop amplifier. I'm preparing to wind the uh, trifiler transformer on this core. Using the standard method of a cordless drill to twist the three wires together before winding them on the core. So I've got the amplifier fired up through the 8 volt regulator. Uh, the target was 15 milliamps per transistor and it's coming out at 29 milliamps. That's pretty nice. If you put your finger on the transistors they are just warm to the touch, but I think this will run okay. I'm going to be mounting it in the box next, and we'll try uh, some amplification through, the, uh, through each channel. So we know that our push-pull common base amplifier has an extremely low input impedance, so we can't really drive it with a 50 ohm generator too effectively and uh, get gain measurements. So we're going to need to make a transformer. And I've wound a transformer here on just an ordinary Type 43 toroid. It's got 16 turns on the primary, and it's got eight bifiler, I'm sorry, four bifiler turns on the secondary. And I've wound that transmission line style so I can get a good solid center tap. This is going to allow me to use an ordinary 50 ohm generator and transform it down to a low enough impedance that I can get some kind of a, a gain measurement with the amplifier. The output uh, I'm also interested in to see if it's anywhere near able to drive the 75 or 50 ohms that we're looking for. So it's all about trying to measure the amplifier at this point. Okay, I've just gone out and I've replaced the amplifier, very cold, the amplifier that's been out there, it's covered with ice still, uh, on the pole. We had some snow last night and it's not warmed up so it's all icy. This is the one I've been using now for about a month and I've replaced it with the uh, the new push-pull circuit, the push-pull circuit we've been working on and now comes the moment of truth. Turn on the receiver and we will apply power. Crying to my brother, you know, you gotta bring me some wine. It is working. I don't know. That's yeah, nice to hear. Know. Okay. That seems to be working pretty well. So I'm noticing that uh, the gain of this amplifier is a little bit less than the other, there's no doubt about it. Um, I did put a 3 dB pad on the output, which I think I'm going to remove now because it's, uh, it is a little bit lower gain than I would like. So we'll take that 3 dB pad out, but I'm pretty satisfied that it's working. Um, again, it's a noticeable gain reduction, but of course the common base amp, especially with the output swamp the way we have it, I think it's, uh, it's going to be a little bit inferior to that other amp we used. But it is working, and it's a, it is a very nice loop amplifier. Wow, it's working pretty well down here at 630 meters. Again, uh, the gain may be off a little bit, but it is doing the job. And once I remove that 3 dB pad, I think it's going to be just fine. 
again, if I was using this with a small loop, like a one meter loop, I would probably go for the added two stages after the uh, common bass amplifier. But I think this is a successful and very stable amplifier. The common bass push-pull uh, loop amplifier.